Hello, friends. We arrived in Nossa Sete with our wonderful hands. This is Hen Anna, Hen Olga, and Hen Sofia. She is the main mother hen we have, as you see. <laughs> and do we have to say you are a farmer, Sergei, or what? Farmer Yasha is also with us, and we are going to travel. And from where will we start our journey? From Vladikavkaz, from North Ossetia, we are going to enjoy the views and food, tell you the stories, show you the most beautiful places of this region. There are so, so many of them. Ura! 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 We arrived in Vladikavkaz town. It was founded in 1784 and 306,000 people live here. The name Ossetia has come to Russian language from Georgian language. This word is directly related with folks who live in this territory. They were called Ossi and Yeti. Translated from Georgian language is Earth, it turns out the Earth of Ossetia. Ossi. I will beat your ass like a Cherokee drum. Jesus, I'm even terrified by looking at her. I have beaten 500, 560. Well, one thing is clear, that it's forbidden to argue with you. No way, he's almost a boxer. Elon lived here about a thousand years before the foundation of Vladikavkaz. Elons are nomadic people who spread their state in the North Caucasus. It existed since 9th to 13th century. A word Elon means proprietor or tribal comrade, but there's one another translation of this word from Greek language. It means wandering. That's exactly why when you are checking on Instagram or in Foursquare, there are this kind of oldies, you see a headline North Assyria, Alenia. In the 13th century, the Mongol Tatar invasion caused irreparable damage to Alenia, and the locals were forced to flee to Hungary and to Byzantium. But not all the locals fled to other countries. Some of them went to the mountains and founded their settlements. That is why the Alans are called the mountain people. Alans even used to live all together in the mountains. They used to live in small communities, but due to the fact that these communities closely communicated with each other, they have always collaborated and they were considered as a single state. And as you can notice in modern North Assyria and in North Caucasus nowadays, people continue to communicate with families closely. So this tradition has been preserved and legendary Caucasus hospitality begins from Фанаты. Это основная аудитория So Many Horses. Главные подписчики. We hope you will like it here with us. In the 18th century, there was a reapproachment between Ossetia and Russia. For the further development, Russia needed flatlands, which it has got from Russia. And Russia, in turn, was interested in strategic passes in Caucasus. Exactly at this period, North and South Ossetia were separated. Until 1840, North Ossetia was considered as a territory of Russia only conditionally. And only 12 years later, Tiflis province was created, which included the Ossetian county. Actually, then, over the control of the the rail pass and the road, a military fortress was created which was named Vladikavkaz. At this moment, North Ossetia became a part of Russian Empire and it started the rise of its economy. But exactly this economic rise was the beginning of war with Russia, after all the society divided into working class and bourgeoisie. And bourgeoisie wanted to rule Assyria independently. Though there were other factors, for example, Turkey has lost a control over this territory and couldn't put up with Ossetians, converted to Christianity and followed Orthodox faith. At this period of history, North Assyria was separated with South, which Georgian princes was claimed, but they were rejected by the 
the Senate of Russia. It's funny, but their application was approved 100 years later. And in 1922, South Ossetia passed under the control of the Georgian Soviet Socialistic Republic as a non-autonomous republic. And the North Ossetia became a part of the RSFSR as an autonomous area, but later it has been reorganized as an autonomous republic. At that monomer history of North Ossetia didn't have many differences between history of South Ossetia. People didn't feel any national discomfort living in one country. But after collapse of the USSR, locals of South Ossetia were cut off from their fellows in Russia. I guess you know the further destiny of South Ossetia. But shortly, they didn't want to become a part of Georgia and using their right for self-determination, they became an autonomous republic. Representatives of eight world religions live in Vladikavkaz. There are Buddhists and Hindus, but main religions are surely Orthodox Christianity and Islam. A dozen museums, a zoo, ten theaters and eight libraries operate in the town. Don't get lazy, visit this wonderful town to look, to meet and to know what is here and how it looks like. And we are moving to mountain part of Assyria. Did you know that we have a light bulb on? Which light bulb? Yellow one, that means we are run out of gasoline. Olya, how do you drive a car? Shit, why we didn't refuel? What should we do with gasoline? Sonia have to suck. This goes to Sergey. <laughs> I've got that Alfa Romeo is also on the way to us. Maybe they would bring us gasoline? Renaud, could you stop by to buy gasoline and take a funnel to pour it? Buy a jerry can. If they wouldn't sell it, tell them your friends are stuck in the mountains. I'll bring it, of course. Sonia refuses to suck gasoline from another car. Who did Renaud? Did you? I did. I haven't noticed a light bulb. We have arrived in Dargaz. Maybe you don't know the Games of Thrones were planned to be shooting here. Basically, at the show there was a main dead man and they planned to shoot his kingdom here. But they didn't make a deal. As they say, in North Assyria there is nothing more important than death. After all, this proud town has come from unity of a dead woman zero and a god who entered her crypt. It is considered like creation of the word symbolically. As by Assyrians, the crypt defines life and there is death in it. That is why farewell of the dead is so important. It helps to prepare for life after life. There is a place in Assyria called Dargav's Scorch. Stone crypts are located here on the slope of the mountain. From a view, there are gorgeous houses, looking familiar with alpine ones, but there's one big difference. Here, at the crypts, there are dead people. It is not difficult to discern the white bones through little holes, through which future dead people got inside. Alive people know, this place is guarded by the gods. Have you noticed how windy it's here today? By the way, it's not like we are unlucky today. It's always windy here because hurricane winds blow from neighborhood Ice George. And what the most interesting is it destroys everything around. But these buildings stand here as they always have. This is a real town with narrow streets on which there are almost hundreds of houses and in general more than 10,000 people have died in Dargavs. History of the town occurrence is pretty evil. Assyria was followed by epidemic for centuries. During one of the epidemic, this caption has appeared on walls of a tomb. Look at us with love and we used to be like you and you are going to be like us. This is a message from the infected villagers who went to Dargav to die and not to pass the infection to Fox. Though the caption has a quite earthy meaning, no one from locals will pass by Dargavs at night even under pain of death. 
Tourists aren't recommended to look into crypts while visiting necropolis, but if you will get courage and look into, you will see boat-shaped coffins. According to local beliefs, this boat is needed to cross over the river of oblivion in the realm of the dead. The city of the dead is guarded by a glare tower, or in other words, the blood tower. It was built by a man who came here many centuries ago and who killed a representative of a local respected clan. As you know, traditions of blood revenge are very strong in Caucasus, but this man didn't hide and didn't get terrified. He decided to build his own tower. He has built it alone and he killed everyone who came here to get revenge at night. As soon as as he destroyed all his enemies, he has lost his meaning of life and he passed away. I just saw human bones, real bones. Imagine there are somebody's legs, hands. Look, only in the 20th century there was a permission to visit here, in 60s, even after war. And before that, it was forbidden before that, because they were checking all the time what else could remain. No, plague. People had come here to die from a plague. Small mountain crypts became the last refuge for people who lived out their last days. People were killed not only from a plague of which they crammed here. Most likely they were killed by an ordinary exhaustion. Besides, when they came here in the early days, fellow villagers brought them food and water. But after some time, it was for no one to bring something because the towns got wider and more people passed away. At those terrified years, the disease in Assyria took more than 92% of population. In 2002, Kolka Glacier descended from the mountains which destroyed Badrov film crew. The glacier cut off the village Dargavs from the road, that's why it has become pretty difficult to get here. For a long time, Dargavs remained cut off from the town, and now it's only possible to get here by a mountain serpentine, by a pretty rough road. Well, you have seen how we got there. What if the car will go? What if the car will break down? Could I please be returned in my car? We have to shut out special for the content. I won't shut out. Scream. I don't want to die. Scream. I'll open the door on the run. How it's considering me? She has opened the door. Stop it. You scared the woman. I guess it wasn't that scary. You scared all the women. <laughs> Sun is already not shining because we are waiting for gathering for two hours. Sun is already not shining for you. Hello! Hi! Where do I pour gasoline? <laughs> From the other side! What about funnel? Do you have it? Let's ask! Have you got a funnel? Is it okay? Is it coming? The process is coming. It got into my sleep. What should I do? You will be high all night. It smells so good. Jesus, this is the most delicious smell in my life. My hand is wet. Look, mine is too. Hello, hello.
Queenita and Ampinian of Vladivostok citizen. Oops, Vladikavkaz. I don't know about Vladivostok, but I do know about Vladikavkaz. Tell us about the most important attractions of the town. What do you do here? It's me. <laughs> Simply the most important attraction is me. Basically, I don't have a desire to get to Moscow extra time. I think to myself from the letters. I wish coming back there faster. Yes, everybody rushes in Moscow, everybody rushes calmly here. It's what it is. In Moscow, everybody hurries up and nobody cares about anybody. Everybody lives his own life like in an anthill. I get in subway, a crowd carries me, I don't follow my way anymore. It's comfortable. It's not. You go out here and you are yourself on every corner. People you know, there are smiles which are toothless sometimes, but still there are smiles. A person looks for a support in other person here. If I will feel bad here, people would come up to me. And nobody needs me out there, do you understand? If somebody will know me personally, then maybe. But basically, if I feel bad, people will pass further. There is not like that here. If you will knock at a difficult moment on any other door, people will open up the door and help you if they can. If they can't help, they would take any actions. Sometimes it's not quite sincere, sometimes it's not the way you thought it would be, but this is here. A difficult moment, it will be easier here. The main idea we want to show is that Caucasus people are really very hospitable, very kind and very cool. Here she is in her phone again. <laughs> Everyone has turned over, has got scared. Hey Vasya, what do I mean? It doesn't work here, it doesn't work against me. Squat down. How long will you be with that phone? If we tear off the heels, then we don't respect the boys. I'm with my weight, bro. If I had a weight like you, I would live like that, I would walk squatting from morning to evening. Come to Ossetia, people are glad to see you and people are open-minded. And we are on our way to eat. Tomorrow we are up for mountains again. Eat, but untranslated Russian language. Here we come. He yells at M and they are scattering. We arrived in Aksinta Canyon, where is situated Evil Bridge. We are going to find it now. By the way, I can tell what is that. They used to build a cafe here, but they haven't finished that for some reason. That's why this track is here, not clear for what. This road is used to be a way to a village, but the village is abandoned. That's why there is this road for tourists, but basically it's not needed. It's a good place for a murder. Frankly, he's quite right. It used to be here that people were sentenced to death. They were thrown off from here. It was considered if a person falls down and survives, he won't be thrown off the second time. All his sins were forgiven. How many people did survive? I guess none. This is the narrowest point of a gorge, and when enemies wanted to come here in the Gorsk gorge, they were detained here. That is why it had been a lot of battles here. Many people died because of the narrowest place. We should throw away a stone and we will not hear how it falls down. Yes, let's go try. It's too loud. Because it's too high.
One, two, three. It used to be a village here, then it was abandoned and that's why this bridge in this quite emergency condition. But we decided to look if there's actually a village there and how this road ends. This road ends by the most unexpected way. We are going to walk to look at it further. What is further? A farm. And the abandoned village? There is no an abundant village here. You just see a dream in was and you want to say, this country can't be conquered. We thought there is a some kind of abandoned village here. We drive to look and there is nothing here. That is all a town legend, do you imagine? Do you know how to get to the place of death of Sergei Bodrov film crew? No? And I will give you a banana. Let to eat. Are you a donkey? What? <laughs> Guys, well, we are off. Excuse me, is Kermedonian Gorge there? Okay, we are on the right way, thank you. It's so beautiful there, I have tears in my eyes. It's 2022 and it's such a weird coincidence. It had been 20 years since the death of Sergei Badrov because at fall of 2022 they had arrived in Vladikavkaz and headed to Kermadonian Gorge, exactly here. It had to be filmed only one scene from a movie here and that scene costed all the lives of film crew participants. It's a weird coincidence that because of a transport delay, which couldn't arrive at the right time, they started filming not at 9 a.m., as they planned of their timing. But they started filming at 1 p.m., accordingly the difference was 4 hours, and film crew had to finish at 3 p.m., but they finished only at 7 p.m. They started to pack equipment at 7 p.m. At 8.15 p.m. a huge glacier fell off of the Kazbek mountain, which was filled with dirt, stones. It was rushing over the river to here with a speed of 150, 200 kilometers in an hour. And literally in 20 minutes, all Kermadonian Gorge was completely covered with stones, ice and dirt. Considering this, it's really fresh that it has happened recently. It's really very dangerous here. When the glacier was rushing over the river, it got covered, recreation centers, all the local houses. There are not a lot of people who live there, but some of the residents were here, and all of them died. 150 people has passed away. 127 people of them are considered to be missing. None of them could be found including film crew of Sergei Bodrov, and he wasn't found neither. The rescue operation lasted almost three months, only 19 people were found over this time. After that, searching works were continuing for two years. There were not only specially educated lifesavers, but all of the local residents, all of the Bodrov fans. Everybody tried to do something, to clean up troubles, but it failed to find the crew.
should I should have bring him my hat. Sergei was acted not only as a director and the screenwriter, but he was also acted as a movie hero. By the script he had to die at the end of the film. Unfortunately, the script turned out to be prophetic. Besides that, filming had to be at the end of August here, but Sergei had a second baby, and because of that he wanted to be with his family. That's why he endured the filming to September exactly to this fatal date. Another one weird coincidence that Bodrov film crew lived in Vladikavkaz with another film crew, which was filming a catastrophe movie about a glacier retreat and imagine that their script has appeared to be prophetic too. And another weird coincidence. Hero of Bodrov movie Sviznoy had to die, and the main hero of the same movie had to survive, and it had happened like that because he wasn't at the filming. Glacier Kolka is a pulsed through glacier, as they say, and it comes down once in a hundred years. So basically it would come down in any way, in any time. But it happened earlier than scientists had predicted, which worked at this area. Now only one thing is clear, that early or late the glacier will come down again. It is an irreversibility. That's why when you come here be very careful. I don't advise to stay here for a long time, because the road is not that big here. If there will be some kind of retreat, the road gets covered instantly, as it happened back then, in connection with which rescue brigades can't get to this place for a long time. That's why be careful and come to this place. Here is that kind of strange home energy. It would be nice to bring flowers for Sergei and to commemorate this wonderful human, all his film crew and all those people who died at this tragedy.